Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'm going to continue the series on the, on the Vienna game with the Anderson defense, something that I originally did not intend to include as a separate video, but I've been getting comments, messages, and many emails to cover this in detail because people find this interesting. In my opinion, it is interesting, but for white. Okay, so we're looking at e4, e5, knight c3, and bishop c5. This is the Anderson defense trying to avoid mainline Vienna theory and trying to get white out of his prep. It's a very rare move, maybe about 300 games played all, toge all together. There are many possible transpositions to different variations of the Vienna, even to the bishop's opening or to the two, three knights game. Uh, and we are going to mention all of that. But we are going to be focusing on two main moves. Two ways to try and punish this. The first one will be knight f3, which I'm going to call the main lines. Because knight f3 is, is an extremely principled move and it just puts pressure on the center. Black's best response probably is to go into the three knights with knight e6, which allows knight e5. Alternatively, black can go d6, neglecting kingside development or not moving the knight out very soon. So we're going to cover knight f3 for white as a response to this Anderson defense as the main lines. The alternative to knight f3 is going to be something that I myself would play and I think I'll make this a part of my online repertoire at least, uh, queen h5. And queen h5 isn't just playing for tricks, even though there are many tricks possible here. It's a double attack on f7 and e5 and black has to be extremely careful. But even if black plays very well, even if black is extremely well prepared, queen h5 is going to provoke weaknesses. So positionally, I believe queen h5 is the best move. So we are going to cover that uh, in the second part of this video. Or sorry, the third part. Okay, before we get into that, I would like to mention the possible transpositions. After bishop c5, if you know, if you've seen the Vienna series so far, if you haven't, please watch the introductory video before you watch this. Uh, that would make a lot of sense. Uh, if not, uh, here's the brief overview. Main ways to play against the Vienna for white are f4, g3, and bishop c4. Bishop c4, the Stanley variation, g3, the Mises variation, and f4, the Vienna gambit. Now, against bishop c5, if white ever plays bishop c4, it's likely that we are going to transpose uh, to the Stanley variation or to the bishop's opening Vienna hybrid or to the Max Lange defense if black combines that with knight c6. So this is going to lead to transpositions. After something like knight f6, we are now in the Stanley, <clears throat> we are now in the Stanley variation and this has been covered in the second video. You can, you can watch that separately. After bishop c5 with g3, we are now in the Mises variation. And again, after knight f6, bishop g2, this is mainline Mises variation. You can watch a separate video on that. Of course, uh, black has to be aware of all the transpositions that are possible. So if you plan to play the Anderson defense as black, trying to get white out of their prep, you still have to be prepared for, for all of this. Now, one thing is interesting. What if white plays f4? Now, usually uh, after knight f6, when white goes for the Vienna gambit, you can see that this knight is under pressure if the pawn is allowed to be captured. So our main lines in the Vienna gambit go d5, fe5, and the knight is under pressure. However, after bishop c5 and f4, we're not gaining a tempo on the knight, uh, and bishop g1 is allowed. So f4 is kind of dubious, but, but not too bad. I should mention that bishop g1 really isn't a, a great idea. After d6, white has the bishop pair and can safely go d4. Queen h4 isn't a problem. If, if queen h4, then just g3, and on queen h2, we can go rook g2. And black has moved the queen. White has a strong center, two pieces developed, and the queen has to move again. So, in this position, after bishop c5, if white goes f4, we are transposing to the Max Lange defense, most likely, or to the Stanley variation if bishop c4 is ever played. So, for example, d6, knight f3, knight c6, we are now in the Max Lange defense, if knight c6. And if knight f6, 
Then bishop c4, we are in the Stanley variation. And again, you can watch that in the second video in the series. So f4 is most likely going to transpose unless, unless black goes for this bishop g1 dubious stuff. Okay, so as white, if you would like to accept being in the Anderson defense, then play the knight f3 or queen h5. Before we get to the two main moves, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Chessbook. Chessbook is a great and efficient way to build, understand, learn, and practice your repertoire. It helps you work on it in a way that I think is very efficient and very fun. Uh, what you can do is you can import your repertoire either by hand or by uploading an actual PGN file like I did for this video. So let's say I don't have a PGN file, I want to do it by hand. So let's say I go to my black repertoire, browse at it something else. Let's say I want to do something against the, let's say G3. Okay, against G3, I go D5, they go bishop G2, my main line is knight F6, then they go knight F3, then my main line is bishop F5 the castle i can keep adding alternatives for my opponents too and it's going to quiz me and let me practice against all of those randomly later but for now let's just do this so obviously you can import your, your entire repertoire by hand and that's gonna that's gonna take some time alternatively you can do this so you go to your white repertoire for example more options import and just upload the pgn file and your entire repertoire will be there that's what i do i create studies on leeches then i download them as pgn files and just upload them here this is exactly what i did with the anderson defense if you would like the study for the under uh, the anderson defense you can find the link in the description and combining it with chessbook will mean that you just get your repertoire on the Anderson defense immediately available for, for practice. Okay, so once you've imported your repertoire, you can do several things. The first thing is you can connect your online accounts, leechess or chess.com or both, and based on your repertoire and based on the games you've played on those accounts, Chessbook is going to find mistakes on your games and it will allow you to review your mistakes. So you get to focus on what you got wrong previously the second part is you get to practice your repertoire so as you can see here i have 158 moves due for review so i can press on practice repertoire let's say just the most common moves in this position i would do this i would do that i can say i don't know show me the answer f4 is my continuation and so on if you know everything great if not it's going to give you a red mark you'll get to work on it later so i think this is the best feature you import your repertoire you get to practice it if you make a mistake it's going to focus on those mistakes and finally a new feature is i'm playing through a model game and this is probably by now my favorite feature because it gives you a game based on your repertoire in the variation you play and you get to guess the grandmaster's moves that's what's usually called solitaire chess but you need to cover up the moves with a notebook or if you do it on screen you need to cover up the screen somehow then you guess whoever side you're playing for guess their moves if you get them wrong uh, then you have to figure out why you got them wrong it's a very useful exercise so doing it here is is very efficient now what i'm using here is the premium account on chessbook but almost everything i did you can get in the free version again the link to chessbook is in the description the premium membership is five dollars a month so not a lot you get unlimited moves in your repertoire and again i've been using it for over a week now and find it extremely useful if you'd like to visit them link in this link in the description and thank you for watching okay back to the video uh let's start with knight f3 so knight f3 i think is a very interesting way to do this so once again e4 e5 knight c3 bishop c5 we just play a very very standard move and if if black goes knight c6 we are now in the three knights this is uh, one of the most common openings on beginner level and one of the most famous openings in chess and now white doesn't have to take on e5 but taking on e5 is the best idea uh, black of course does get the piece back after d4 bishop d6 takes takes and bishop d3 although f4 is also possible i just believe this is very very comfortable for white uh, and I, 
I don't like the three knights for black, if I'm going to be perfectly honest. So after knight f3, the pawn has to be defended. Of course, queen e7 or f6 are out of the question. Those are just absurd moves. Queen e7 runs into knight d5, so does queen f6. And f6 is dreadful. We can just probably just take on e5 and play queen h5. Uh, so out of the question. So black plays d6. Okay, there are two ways to play this. And the way I would recommend you to play this just gives you a huge advantage. So the engine is going to say this is close to equal, plus 0.3, plus 0.4, something like that. But when we play knight a4, I don't care that the engine says that white is only slightly better. White is going to get the bishop pair. And of course, black plays bishop b6. We take this, black takes with the a pawn, we go d4. And this is very, very similar to some lines of the exchange Spanish if we put this pawn back on a7 and put this pawn on d6. So white is opening up the center very quickly, threatening to take on e5. If, if for example, a careless move like knight f6, then, then just takes and we get this position, which is obviously good for us. Uh, so on d4, we are opening up the center and black actually has to make a queen move. The best move here is queen e7. You can take on d4, but that helps us. In this position, we can take with the knight or with the queen or play bishop g5. I think knight takes is best and after something like knight f6, we can now go bishop d3 or even f3. Uh, I like bishop d3 best and let's say knight c6. Uh, we can go knight b5, we can go c3, I like c3, just reinforcing the center. And after, let's say, castles and castles for white, we have the bishop pair, we have no problems in this position. We are slightly better according to the engine, but from a human perspective, uh, it's easier to play white. So after queen e7, which is the main move, now again, we just continue developing. Let's say bishop d3, black is threatening to take the pawn. Uh, bishop g4, for example. And now we take on e5 because the pawn is attacked. D takes e5. H3, the bishop moves away. Queen e2. Again, the bishop pair and a slight advantage in pawn structure on the queen side. The only upside for black is that this rook is active. But okay, I mean, it's, we're not going to blunder the a2 pawn. So I think knight f3 is a very, very principled way to play. And you're basically forcing black to have a slightly worse position. Now, finally, I would like to look at queen h5. And this is, this is interesting. So e4, e5, knight c3, bishop c5, queen h5. May seem like a random crazy move. Now, there are some lines in which we are going to be transposing to other openings. Uh, and it's possible to reach this via the Max Lange defense. So let's say knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5 one of the common moves here uh, is to go queen g4 and after g6 to go queen f3 and this is one of the lines in the max lange defense we're going to reach the same position after queen h5 so we go queen h5 and black can blunder very easily so d6 is the most logical defense we have to defend e5 and if e5 falls, white is winning. So for example, g6 is a blunder that loses the game. Uh, knight f6 is a blunder that loses the game. So already black can lose this position in a single move. If knight c6, then bishop c4, and we are basically in the Max Lange defense. So after g6, queen f3, this is that same position I just showed you. And it's fine for white. As I said, when you go queen h5, and your opponent makes a move like g6, then that deduce, induces long-term weaknesses. In this case, this bishop is outside of the pawn chain if black plays d6, and black's going to have to go d6 to liberate the bishop, which means that these squares are going to be weak, tough to defend. After, for example, knight f6, knight g2, let's say d6, d3, you can see that this bishop is ready to go, and it's, it's not at all simple to defend this for black. In fact, black can go badly wrong. Like a move like castles uh, immediately is plus seven. We just go bishop g5. So after queen h5, knight c6 is okay, but it transposes to the Max Lange defense. Uh, alternatively, after bishop c4, 
g6 does not have to be played. Black's second best defense or second defense with g6 is always queen f6. Uh, queen e7 is never good because it runs into knight d5. This is a pattern you should remember. And now if, for example, queen d6 or queen d8, we can just take and, and then take. So queen e7, not a defense, instead queen f6. And this is a bit more sensible. However, after knight f3, this is still a ton of pressure. And if black doesn't go g6 now, let's say let's say d6, then we can again go knight d5 and the queen has to move away. Queen g6 fails to knight c7, so that loses. Queen d8, uh, now again, knight c7, okay, knight c7 is actually not a good idea because now uh, the d pawn has moved, so the queen defends over here, but we can go d4 and just start putting pressure. If, if pawn takes d4, then bishop g5 f6 cannot be played on queen d7 we can just castle and continue and on bishop takes d4 again queen g5 or bishop g5 and all of our pieces are coming into the game so after d6 after sorry queen f6 knight f3 i really think black should go g6 uh, if something like knight g7 that's also okay but we can go d3 and maybe bishop g5 if d6 we now have knight b5 putting pressure on c7. There are many, many, many options for white in this position. So I think that this defense with queen f6 ultimately will lead to black playing g6. And now we go queen g5, we offer a queen trade. We're fine with a queen trade because g6 is a slight weakness. And if black trades this, then white is much better. The engine gives this as winning for white. It was hard for me to understand why. But this knight coming to h6 to defend f7 is already a huge weakness because now we have knight d5. And if we compare the three minor pieces that have been developed, it's obvious that white's minor pieces are much better. So queen f6, knight f3, if g6, queen g5, black, sh black shouldn't take, black doesn't take this. Black's best, I think, is knight d4, threatening to take on c2. And now we can just exchange. Queen takes, knight takes knight takes pawn takes knight b5 looking at c7 something like bishop b6 and of course white's pawn structure is better it's nothing major according to the engine it's not enough to win but it's a pretty pretty pleasant position so queen h5 uh, i think d6 is the best move knight c6 uh, I, I i think should be avoided so d6 the principled move firstly you sometimes gain access to the g4 square and you have bishop g4. Secondly, this bishop is defended. Thirdly, there's connection between these two pawns. So if the queen ends up on e7 or on d7, there are no tricks with knight b5, knight c7. Now, what's the idea behind queen h5? Well, the idea is to checkmate. So we go bishop c4. Okay, it's, it's as simple as that. Now, if we looked at some random blunders, if, for example, knight f6, then checkmate. Now, this most likely isn't going to happen, but this is the point. If queen e7, then knight d5. Okay, again, white is much better. The queen has to move again. d7 is the only square. And now we can go queen g5, again, provoking weaknesses. f6, if, if g6 is played in this position, then knight f3. And there are just too many weaknesses. Where does this knight go? If the knight moves, then, then here. If c6, for example, then we can just take on e5. This is a crazy line. Knight takes e5, d takes e5, and now queen takes e5. And the rook is dropping. So g6 cannot be played after queen g5. You can already see that black's position is very, very tough. So after bishop c4, there are basically two main defenses. Uh, queen f6 and g6 as we looked at before queen d7 is better than queen e7 but again uh, runs into queen g5 again g6 is bad for the same reason so f6 and now queen h5 and i think the best move according to the engine is king d8 king f8 is okay but let's say g6 a human move we just retreat the queen to e2 we've provoked many weaknesses h4 h5 is going to be strong black's king is definitely not safe on the king side so black still has a lot of work to do before this king can can reach safety so after bishop c4 i believe 
uh, g6 and queen f6 again are the are the main moves now g6 is okay a voluntary weakness uh, after queen f3 we are in the same position we looked at previously uh, and knight f6 is probably the best move white continues d3 uh, black can continue bishop g4 and that's fine we can go queen g3 knight bd7 knight a4 again win the bishop pair our position is perfectly fine and we're gonna have the bishop we're gonna have a slight advantage because of g6 and a pleasant position now <clears throat> the critical defense in my opinion and this is the critical position that i would hope to get if i played against the anderson defense is queen f6 and now i found a move that has never been played before and that move is f4 this is extremely interesting if you play the vienna and they go for the anderson defense play this way please now Queen, queen takes pawn loses on the spot and black resigns straight away. The reason is d4. Now, if you don't move the queen away, I'm going to take your queen. If you move your queen away, I'm going to take your bishop. It's as simple as that. The only seemingly sensible move is bishop g4. But now we just take bishop takes f7. And after queen takes f7, queen g4 is threatening. Pawn takes bishop and queen c8. And if you save your bishop, then queen c8. If king e7, then knight e5. And you have to give up your queen, otherwise it's checkmate. This is remarkable. So f4, the queen cannot take. Well, what if pawn takes? Pawn takes is bad, but it's not immediately losing. If pawn takes f4, white is better after knight d5. And the queen really has to go to d8. If the queen goes to, let's say, e5, then we have knight c7. If the queen goes to where, well, it cannot go anywhere else. Queen d8 is the only move. And now we can just take on f4. We took our pawn back. There's pressure here. The queen has to move again. Uh, again, a pleasant position. So after f4, the pawn should not be taken either with the e-pawn or with the queen. Uh, black has a couple of options. One of them is bishop e6 trying to relieve the pressure on f7 but i believe knight d5 is good white should hold a slight advantage because again black is forced to give away the bishop pair uh, you don't want to allow knight c7 neither do you want to play knight a6 so bishop takes bishop takes is fine and finally the most sensible move should be knight e7 and this is a move that's very hard to play you have a queen on f6 there's pressure on f7 there's a pawn on f4 uh, staying calm in a position like this seems hard so after knight e7 white just continues d3 and in this position uh, ef4 is actually better because all of those tactics don't really work the knight is uh, holding on so the knight defends d5 so we can now go e takes f4 but the pawn is going to be regained swiftly we just go knight g2 now g5 is definitely risky if g5 is played we can just go h4 and eventually all of the pawns are going to fall of course uh if h4 h6 then we can just take and we can just keep taking the pawn is pen the rook is hanging so after knight g2 the only way to give away that pawn in a favorable way for black is to play f3 which forces gf3 but i believe this is pleasant for white um we have we don't have the g1 square but we may have it after d4 if we manage to play d4 so for example knight bc6 bishop g5 the queen moves away i think knight g3 or knight f4 is best so for example this knight takes castles knight a4 again we're going for this bishop white has this f pawn moving forward and i i think white's center and the fact that white is about to probably get the bishop pair is a great thing because of course this doesn't work we can just keep chasing the bishop away and eventually the, the bishop is going to be trapped and and or traded off and alternatively there are some counter attacks but they aren't too good so if they play this main line against queen h5 if they go d6 then bishop c4 and if queen f6 f4 is extremely interesting now you can get as i said the full study 
uh, of this Anderson variation on my Patreon page. You can find the link in the description as well as the link to Chessbook. If you combine those two, you can learn this pretty efficiently and pretty easily. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.